That's to light me off. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we are live. Welcome to SEO Meetup. Woo -woo -woo. Woo -woo. Oh. Slideshow. Slideshow. Cool. I can never get this to work. Please do the thing. Uh, it's okay. Cool. Awesome. It's not doing the thing. I don't know. I did my best. All right. <laughs> oh, it's doing that there. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, All right. Hello and welcome to SEO Meetup for December, Christmas edition. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! All right, thank you so much for doing the woos again. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have had, um, what a year, right? It's been an actual um, massive year. It's been a really, really great time to search. It's evolved so much. Um, I see a lot of faces who have been coming to this. I see a couple of new faces, which is always awesome. Um, so really, really excited about that. Um, we've got a really, really great lineup for you guys tonight. We've changed up the model a little bit. Um, we've got a little quiz, we've got some prizes, how cute. Um, but really the, the absolute standout, the massive thing um, is that we've got Sally Mills all the way from Brisbane. Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> And um, my co-host for the evening, because Peter Mead is sick, and he's usually the one that always reaches me for the mic, um, Peter Machinkovich. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Going to move this a little bit here. All right, so you know, you guys know the drill. Um, before anything really starts to kick off, I really just want to do a like, really um, important welcome to country. Um, I want to... Speak for the, um, I want to acknowledge um, elders past, present, and emerging. Uh, we are on stolen land. This is the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kuan Nation. Wow, okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no disrespect here because uh, yeah. Sanjani has never been seceded, and um, I want to pay respects. Thank you. All right, getting to the housekeeping. All right, um, you know the drill. Um, I kind of did already do this before, but again, we're going to go through the news, then we've got the quiz, then we've got the keynote, um, and then we've got a voracious little Q&A afterwards. Um, always fun stuff. <laughs> um, a little thing with a quiz. I'm sorry, Peter. I'm banned. But you're banned. <laughs> We've got to let other people, I mean, you're an absolute um, okay. encyclopedia when it comes to search, and it's awesome to have you here. Um, but I'm banned, you're banned, I think that's only fair. What about guest on? No, no, no. Oh, guest on, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are so many great people um, you know, here tonight. I'm seeing lots of great faces, some SEO leads, some SEO managers, um, some really, really amazing people from in-house and from agencies. So respect young, you're smart people. You know, it's fine. You've got it. Um, just want to say thank you so much to the sponsors uh, for, for this. Um, I want to say thank you so much to Peter Machinkovich of Easy Go Gaming. Um, he's the one who uh, has supplied a lot of the food and the drinks um, in the last couple of months out of his own pocket, and we just want to say thank you. Um, oh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also to Easy Go Gaming for supplying this venue for us um, free of charge. Uh, it, it was a nightmare to have a venue without a venue <laughs> every month. So just having like a permanent home um, has just really, really changed the game for us. So thank you so much. Um, of course, Peter Mead, who um, is experiencing some health difficulties, like we just want to shout out, and I hope you're feeling well, Peter. Um, but thank you so much for doing your workshops um, you know, through us as well. If you want to be able to get that, Peter Mead, as you guys know, is literally the godfather of SEO here in Australia and with over 20 years of search experience. Um, he helps out agencies, he helps out in-house, um, he's an absolute G. And if you want to get in touch with him to maybe do some one-on-one -on -one kind of workshops um, for whatever facet of search that you need to help with, here's a contact deeds. All right. <laughs> the other part, all right, I'm, I'm just going to like stand here because um, toilets, again, um, I've got like 50 of these photos on my phone, but honestly, my phone um, as well. they're at the front door, but like, Sometimes you just be lining for that bathroom and you just completely forget. So just do yourself a favor now. Take a photo of this. Um, if you need to go, you will be able to get out and then you can just push the buzzer to get back in. But um, ladies, 
or you know, female identifying people, we are all on this level. Um, men, men identifying people are on the level one. It's also um, level three, and you'll see in the front door, that's actually the better bathroom, so just FYI. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, like, it's like unused, pristine, like male bathrooms. It's, it's, this is level three, it's, as you'll see in the thing, like it's, I'm not gonna announce it here, it's only for people who try hard. Enough. See, I, I, thought, I thought it was all an under renovation, so like I've been going up there but just pissing on the floor. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they have a loo there now. Is this being recorded? Yeah, yes. It's broadcast <laughs> live. <laughs> yes. In perpetuity. Oh, years. great. Oh, great. That's what it means. Can you turn that one into a meme? Okay. Uh, so I'm moving swiftly on. You guys got photos of this? Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> running away, running away. All right. So SEO news. Um, Cool. <laughs> so it is um, in tradition, uh, we always kind of recap what happened in the last month, but because this is just December, and we're not going to have a January SEO meetup because honestly, we need, all of us need holidays, we all need breaks, and most people go away, so come on, like, you know, let's be real. It's not going to be happening in January. So we try, I try to get a couple little things just from December, but this is what's going on. So hands up here, who worked with e-commerce? Yeah, that's a good half of the room. <laughs> all right, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, like breaking all the records, seven billion bucks. Boo. Yeah, so this is NAB data. Uh, we are voracious little spenders. I was kind of surprised with this because like, like when I looked at Google Trends, 2019 was like massive. Um, but yeah, like we did some good stuff this what, year. What prompt did you get to get this image? Um, <laughs> just want to give a shout out to Dali too. Um, <laughs> uh, so just leveraging um, all unique images and stuff like that. Um, also, I kind of copied it from last month's because I was lazy and I'm running out of credits. So I don't want to pay. It looks like it's using a lipstick as a walkie-talkie. I mean, Am you know, I know it's, that? It's, it's spray on lipstick. Spray on lipstick. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. It's it's actually Homer's invention where like he has like a makeup gun. <laughs> Yeah, it's just in compact form now. Um, yeah, so it's all up. Um, again, like anyone who works in, in this space, like I know you guys have been getting your briefs in at least three months or earlier before. Um, I kind of like had a really nice moment where I checked out Black Friday sales and then saw like my old client, the good guys. Uh, they're already on it with 2023 and, and with like a little FAQ scheme. And I was like, ah, <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> All right, Google business profiles, now showing review time for some edits. Um, honestly, this is like a really interesting one, only for the fact that like Google business profiles, Google My Business, whatever you remember it as or refer it to now, um, this stuff, this stuff um, is seen by their internal teams. And if it's like, oh, okay, like 10 minutes to be reviewed, it's kind of already getting like the, the clock timer starting. So maybe they're using those as their internal KPIs. I don't know, but if this means that like any reviews and stuff like that that get added quicker, that would be awesome. Because um, I made like a bunch of edits while I was traveling and doing all kinds of other stuff. Um, I think I'm level seven, just saying. Um, yeah, I'm a brag one. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, every day. Um, like it took me, it was like maybe a month afterwards of making like edits of like adding a new business. And I also like added some iterations to the hours and things like that. Like it was like two weeks and then a month. So having this like now starting to populate, maybe this is like them actually cutting down like the implementation time. So hopefully some good news for all you local, local guys. Gary Ish, um, mm -hmm. this is not necessarily like a, a like an anything new, but I thought it was really interesting that um, he basically said like 60% of the web is duplicate. So that's crazy. That's absolutely insane. Um, I also like added some things like that, uh, that uh, he recommended, or at least like um, Kenichi Suzuki uh, did like a little nice tweet wrap up of the kinds of things that he recommended us to do. Um, but it's really interesting that this is kind of like what Google's putting out there and saying, because I don't know about any of y'all, but like just the amount of things that are, or the amount of clicks and the amount of featured snippets, the amount of things that, um, pages that get added to the index, I just feel like it's getting a little bit more and more and more and more and more competitive. Um, and we had a wonderful talk uh, with Gaston Riera about crawl capacity management, 
where we really went kind of deep down into this topic. So again, I'm just I'm just following threads of, of like, hey, we talked about this, and now this is happening, and like, ooh, look at all the common patterns that we're seeing. Any comments? No. Nope. <laughs> Super good content, bad. Yay! <laughs> I feel like surprisingly, like this is like the least we've we've heard from you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, in case you haven't noticed, I haven't seen this slide yet, so I haven't got a hard take. Yeah, yet. that's true. Yeah. To be honest, I put them like in a fever dream this morning. Yeah. So. They're like Google my business, like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Google key moments. Uh, seek to action markup uh, now supports twelve languages. Again, this has been around for ages except now they're also doing it for different languages. So um, I've got an international client, you've got an international client, or well, like a lot of us here have international clients. If you've got videos and things like that that do generate some traffic, you'll be able to see this in your search console. You can be able to add um, seek to action, which will just kind of like do little moments and things like that. Um, now, if you've got those in different languages, you can also uh, have these teams basically put up the same markup and they will be able to pull out these um, things and, and structured videos as well. Um, from, I don't know about you guys, but like I'm looking at uh, one of my clients who has like a ton of video content, they're like a SaaS tool. So like videos and images and things like that are a really, really big uh, measurement for success for them. Um, and Putting these kinds of things through, really from a click-through rate perspective, just was an absolute game changer. Like we got like a couple percent increase um, from doing this across like a, like a couple hundred pages. So like that was enough for me to be like, oh, this is actually really, really cool. FYI. Boom. Um, <laughs> so this isn't new. I mean, it says like Google's new spam policy circumvention, um, but honestly, like, this is not new at all. Like if you've got multiple sites, if you're um, if, if you're like intended to distribute content and be able to put that out there and um, like engage in behavior that was previously prohibited, I'm now reading off the slides. I'm doing everything that I hate about like a presentation, but I apologize. Um, but I, again, it's basically going to like either provide some kind of penalty or manual action for these kinds of things. Um, or it's just going to completely just not Actually, no, sorry. It's just going to not allow you to be able to get any featured snippets for this stuff. So the way that I interpret this is, OK, I've got a client with boilerplate content across loads of different stuff. Um, maybe like this is not always presenting like the best content. If they start to put anything through, like, I don't know, a live stream that might like get some adult content. Um, again, that will nuke it, but having like boilerplate content might nuke it for featured snippets, so, or rich results, rather. Cool. Yeah. I don't think it's any really new. They're just probably documenting it and re Yeah. Like, if, if you own other websites, they can pump up the other websites, and, you know, they don't want you to do it because it works, obviously. Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you must do the thing. The thing is bad. OK. With, with mm. All right. So this goes to the quiz portion. <laughs> what a wild month with you. All right. OK. Um, I do apologize. Uh, these questions are not easy because um, I know this because I was like, oh, yeah, that would be fine. And then a friend of mine looked at it and was like, what are you doing to these people? You are a bridge. <laughs> no. You're racing it now. Well, you know, it's I'm curmudgeonly and sometimes you know, I wear green, so there we go. Um, okay, so quiz time starts now. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I don't have any more questions. It's all in, balls, balls to the walls. Um, but you know what, like, if you've been here before, you listened to the news, paid attention to stuff that's going on, these should be hopefully pretty good. Um, all right, so question one, how does Google treat guest posting in 2022? And for uh, part two of this, what update specifically targets that? Go. I'm willing to be wrong. No, no, go for it. What a fool. Is it, <laughs> is, this, is the language specifically um, in, in 2022, is it around guest posting at scale and that's considered, um, that's considered like a manipulative link practice and the update specifically targeted was the spam update. 
Is this Valentine? Um, okay. In part, yes. Like it's kind of like a half half answer, but Is you it, are, answer, it, it depends. <laughs> no, I eliminated all the depends. I even gave most specific examples. But you're 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 right for the first part. Yeah. The second part, you're kind of right, but like not quite. It's it's related to the spam update. It's, um starts with H. Helpful content. Hey! Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Woohoo! Nice. Okay. Um. So, excellent. We have prizes. Um, no, 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 technically, all right, I'll, I'll find you two later and to find a, a good prize that you guys can share because the other prizes are very much whole. <laughs> um, I also just want to say like a massive shout out to Paula, Paula Glenn from Pixel Storm. Yes, out of the back there. Woo! Thank you so much for supplying the prizes. The prizes being here, just, um, just got on the floor for now, but you know, sorry. <laughs> awesome. So. So the answer of that is Google can identify sites with low value. So um, they've got low value content, um, like they've been unnaturally being built, like they can be able to see from their like, link profiles um, and they can be able to see like um, that is that again, this is around the helpful content update uh, because they've just got systems that are in place to be able to detect this a lot more um, with a lot more scrutiny. So yes and yes and so awesome. it's bad and how it is yet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A truly private PBN is if you're on website. Fine. <laughs> private. How private is it? Mine's not even connected. Mine's not even hosted. Yeah, yeah. It's just on my. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's all. It's all good. Try to have a network from other websites. <laughs> And all the affiliates are like, ah, <laughs> yeah, but they never seen my PBN. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do you have a question? Yeah. What's a guest post? A guest post? There we go. Okay. A guest post is a an article or a blog post that is on another website, usually an authoritative website, that's written like you know, it's like here's a here's a post by. Jim Ferguson, I guess, like James. <laughs> it's like talking about Jim. how great SEO is, but then conveniently it's like. Jim Ferguson writes about SEO Melbourne hyperlink to optimizing the, no, 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 no. <laughs> too, big, too, too big for exact match. <laughs> like, so, yeah. So essentially you're you're writing content on another website and you're not the actual owner of the website, but you're a guest. It's like someone going on Sunrise spooking their new product when they just paid their PR firm paid a bunch of money for like Koshi to go, oh this is great. Like essentially that's what's happening with uh, guest posting. So if Google doesn't know it's a guest post, what they say is, oh, this website said this uh, Jim, Jim Ferguson is a great SEO. So like pass great SEO to that thing, and he's becoming more known as great SEO, mm -hmm. where really it's just all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> uh, it's too low. Too low. <laughs> <laughs> Also, you can just um, go to level three as well. Yeah, Apparently, yeah, it's a nicer know. place to go. Oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> 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 level three. All right. All right. Next question. <laughs> All right. This one's another little fun one. Is it possible to get an FAQ featured snippet with pure HTML? Yes. Nothing yes. else. Yes. No. Oh, I have yeah. a better answer. I have a better answer. It depends. It depends. It depends. Oh, God. <laughs> we don't, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a better answer. We'll go for it. Go, yeah, yeah, state, your, state your arguments. Yeah. Well, it depends. It depends. No, you got, you got to back it up. It depends on what. It depends on what. Yeah. Solar players. Yeah. Solar players. Titles. You're right. It depends on whether you apply within a scheme or Without, I think the question is without schema. Like yeah, is, that's so Jason Dash So, for example, you can just, you can do it in or RDFA or, um, or microdata. Yeah. Micro I'd say, it depends on the theme. Yeah. It depends on the you're using. Oh, there's a lot of people. 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 Oh, there's Oh, well, this is so great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I can't the, the, oh, you, you mean the um, 
Oh, shoot. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, it's like, they can read deeper into the content. Deeper into the content. It's all deep. All right, hands up if you think yes. Sorry. Messages. Yeah. All right. Hands up if you think no. All right. <laughs> the answer is you need FAQ schema markup to be eligible for that enhancement in search results. Yeah. Some features may be able to automatically pick up what you're putting it out on the web page, but you should really check the specific documentation to be even sure if that's a possibility. But for an FAQ rich result, you definitely need the markup. So well done. Yeah. The two people in the room. All right. That's like, that's like, it's oh, wait, like, you have two winners. The other thing that ah, crap. <laughs> I've screwed this up, Paul. I've screwed this up. All right. You two, come find me after this. We'll split, split things. Well, technically, two, Nick, that's back pay. So, um, technically, that's the best part of it. Why is um, microdata not considered HTML? Yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Because it, it is literally. So, technically, okay, if we want to get technical, ES Hicks has been developed HTML5 in 2009 as the whole idea of microdata is. Uh, it's, 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 yeah. so, yeah. it's actually it is part of um, HTML. That's the reason why the metal tag in the body is only valid in schema situations. And a lot of situations are actually invalid um, HTML. So I think it's more about like can, the question is probably phrased as in can Google interpret the market markup of your page um, through instead of explicitly being defined with um, schema or defined terms but with implicit markup. So we use the implicit semantic markup. Can it interpret that and use that in an FAQ result specifically in search? And the answer was no. Uh, Wait, the HTML attributes are part of HTML? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. agree. I'm, yeah. I agree. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah. You can make perfect HTML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You need schema for FAQ. Yeah, I agree. I think phrasing the question is more like, and also JSON dash LD is seen as something that like is a little bit more universal except for Baidu. It's, yeah. it's the best way of doing it. Yeah, but like we're talking, we're talking, they're talking, they're, they're making arguments of micro data and micro format and other ways to actually get FAQ to trigger. Welcome to the founder job. But I think it's more, I think it should be more accurate to say we've got schema not all. This is one of the best ways to Hey, I didn't like the question and answer. Yeah. So I'm not taking responsibility. We're, All we're, right. We're SEO lawyers now. <laughs> so are we arguing with who's okay. correct or who's not technically All right, I'm taking time. <laughs> she was right. We, we, she is. It depends. If you have multiple elements, that's when they can implement uh, correctly. I mean, yeah. if the question was read exactly as is, is HTML uh, added with HTML? First of all, it's the SEO meetup, not the lawyer or legal meetup. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to like look up reference cases. Or yeah, it's also yeah, this is yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Case. Yeah. Like, this is well resourced when it comes to legal. This is this is taken from <laughs> this is taken from Google documentation. Yeah. So Google's wrong. Yeah. Yes, that's your. Yeah. 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 Schema can be applied in two ways. One is Jason LB, and one is the like. Yes. Uh, what about I? Uh, 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 yeah. What about IDFA? Three ways. Three ways. Three ways. Sorry. <laughs> 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 three ways. But also, they're accurate. I mean, it's true. Yeah. Uh, the, the controversy was the use of the word HTML and what is and isn't bad with HTML. Moving on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm the one with the power. All right. Could the use of HTTP-3 improve SEO performance? Um, improve SEO because it improves performance? Sure, sure. No. Sure, no. 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 <laughs> yes. You've got it. You've got it. What's the answer? You've got it. That's exactly right. Is it because Googlebot doesn't? Is it currently experimenting with HTTP-2 and only has HTTP-1 to fully support it? But what about um, indirectly via Crux? Because yeah, Crux so comes from there. Exactly. See. It doesn't. It doesn't even. It doesn't even like. This is so new that it doesn't even call it yet. No, no, no. But like the question. Let's go back to the question. Let's go, let's go back to the legal. Okay. Oh, no. So the, the question the was: <laughs> Could the use of HTTP this might be the first and the first and last quiz? Um, everything. As, as everyone has established, Crux is not measured by a Google, but it's actually used by Chrome by the user experience. So every single Chrome user. 
So if a web server and Chromium, the browser, support HTTP3, and it does include um, all the various core web, web, uh, web vital things, and some of you people believe that it helps SEO, I'm a little bit more skeptical of that. But like, if it does help, then therefore the question is yes in this exact answer. If they had HTTP3, HTTP3 before, and it turned them green, and it didn't before, had it was red or whatever, then it could technically help them in SEO. So, so, so my answer actually includes Core Web Vitals. Yeah, but then it's like... So it yeah, doesn't so actually use this as any signal that might it help rankings. So you're saying Core Web Vitals doesn't help? And it's not... There's, <laughs> no, there's also... The, the crawlers don't specifically pick up anything that it recognises no. as HTTP Destry at the moment. Um, and in terms of performance, it's not significant enough to be able to affect Core Web Vitals. Um, so... I'm going to say no to that. I, I would argue between HTTP 1 to 3 <laughs> and 5. <five. laughs> <laughs> HTTP 2 to 3, not really, but then we're getting into like the different levels of web APIs. What's, what's the difference between 2 and 3? With 1.182, there's multi-places. Yeah. 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 I'm going to just say that Gaslin's right, and I'm going to... <laughs> Congratulations! And you're the one that gets the whole prize. <laughs> oh, actually, you can choose. You can choose. Yeah. We have this, we have roses, hey. um, we have Toblerone, and for all you other people, come find me. Other people, wow. All right. <laughs> so which one would you like? How many questions? I don't want to. I have to find this. Okay, we'll do this later. There's a question. Question. Not What is HTTP 3? Okay, so HTTP 1, 2, and 3 are different types of protocols. And essentially, the original protocol. Are you asking because you can't speak? I'm like, yeah. So, um, whenever That's a web browser yeah. accesses a URL or web address, it has certain things that it sends to the web server. The web server sends back to it in regards to how to connect. Now, HTTP as a protocol, that's what the P stands for. It's protocol. It's basically a, it's like a set of rules of how a web browser can connect to a page. What you can and can't do, what's outstanding. It's kind of like, you know, you're putting in your passport, here's the rules to enter our country, that kind of thing. Basically, I want to see a web page on my web browser, here are the rules between connecting to this URL address. Now, from the early days of the internet, we were using something called HTTP1, very, very basic. Um, un it's like very uncompressed, it was very strictly text-based. Um, at the time, it was fine. But eventually when in, say, the mid-2010, so say 2015, 2016, uh, et cetera, um, Google were working on something called Speedy, S-P-D-Y, which was the precursor to HTTP2. And that improved things by a compressing um, the HTTP header, which made basically things smaller when they can do the initial handshakes instead of doing like a fancy little, little quick little thing there. And then you also allowed you to load things multiple times. So you couldn't have a giant image blocking up a list of other images. So that's HTTP2, which was a massive improvement to the web. HTTP3 is actually a lot more newer. Uh, it involves technologies like Quick, which is Q-U-I-C. I don't know it fully, but it's apparently way faster, but it's still very early because it's not supported by all web servers, not supported by all web browsers. You have to enable it to flags in various browsers. So it's actually not widely supported enough to have the amount of impact. So going back to the crux thing, if you make the argument, there's not enough users who use HTTP3 enabled browsers to actually have an impact crux. Yes, can um, we say yes. that HTTP can we say that HTTP two is less racist than HTTP one? That was a serious statement. Um, definitely. Well, well, Asian characters. Oh, so it supports Asian um, characters. HTTP two supports less, like non. Uh, so uh, it's like uh, a, uh, so it's uh, UTS support kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, so I think like HTTP two over major things given that. Well. I would say it's more like Unicode yeah, yeah, yeah. was a very hard problem to solve in the 90s, and <laughs> when they were developing HTTP 1, they probably didn't include Unicode support. Not probably, they did it. They did it. And yeah. HTTP 2 solved that problem. So, for mm -hmm. how many billion, uh, like what percent of the population <laughs> doesn't speak English, and how many billion people live in a country that is tied with, um, like, yeah. And like and, 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 and all kind of Japanese characters, HTTP 2 solved that problem by allowing. Although not a lot of domain use Asian characters, because um, the yeah. legacy is there in Indian or, or Romanized yeah. characters, but HTTP2 yeah. solved that problem, which is probably the, one of the biggest things for HTTP2, other than speaking performance. 
Yeah, there was less racist. People yeah. like the inflation actually transmitted in the in the uh, header as well. Like, was that not supported? Oh, you mean like characters? So they, they would encode that, that a character. So they would encode. So if a character existed, they would encode it. So yeah, like, yeah, instead right. of actually having the fully supported character, they would have a series of symbols like an ampersand. So another character. Uh, so whatever you access a, say for example, a ping, uh, like a, a Romanized or like a kanji or any of these kind of things, when you open it in an English browser, English URI protocol, what happens is that you will get all these funny characters in your URL. So you, like someone in China sends you a funny URL, or you're even if you look at Ahrefs, this happened to me when I was researching Japanese keywords. Um, I would see a strange URL that was like, um, percentage sign 20, this is that. I opened it up and in my, because I'm using a modern browser in Chrome, it actually showed it in the Japanese character, which I can't read, but I can go to one of my Japanese uh, speaking reading colleagues and they can say, oh, that means a casino in Japan or something like that. And I'm like, oh, well, when I was looking at it in my S like A address, it was just that. So that's kind of a good point there. Moving on. Okay, okay. <laughs> So a good analogy to understand the HTTP protocols is the, the cell phone network. So HTTP 1 would be like 2G, HTTP 1.1 is 3G, and so on and so on. So for example, HTTP 3 would be 5G. Uh, not, not every cell phone supports 5G. The same happened to browsers and the communication systems and things like that. And it's just that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Awesome. I'll do a poll about the quiz later. You know, such a divisive question. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried. There's only two more. <laughs> There's only two more. I only made five. Okay. All right. Um, if it is relevant to add it, can you add the website schema and software application schema too? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Why not? You can do what you want. You can do what you want. Yeah, it's flexible. It's a different question. <laughs> Yes, but it depends on what you're trying to prioritize. It depends again. Oh, I mean, right. yes. It depends on what you want to prioritize. Right? If you want. Wait, how would you add both? Like, how would you actually add both? Well, you can add them both as the same IDs. You can join them together. Yeah. Um, weird, 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 weird. <laughs> Notes. <laughs> Website notes. Okay. Um, if you're yes, you can absolutely do this. If you're um, if you're say like on a software application, you could be able to mark that up. Um, as long as like you're not you're able to nest everything that um, that there's one website note on the homepage and not multiple website notes. That's really the key with that. With that. Question. Is it because they share some of the same keys? Um. Yes. That is right. So that's why. Yeah. yeah that is that is why. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got everyone said yes. Okay, well I heard you the loudest. Spin the wheel. <laughs> it's, it's spin the wheel. Who calls green? Oh god. You can't. I don't get the wheel. Yeah. No, you don't get to spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Uh you have to No, we're not gonna give you a two hundred fifty dollar badge, no. <laughs> Alright. Alright. I'm still okay. out of phone. <laughs> All right, question number five. This is the last question. This is the last question. Is an excessive number of no index pages an issue for discovery um, or indexing? It depends. Well, I mean, it went. <laughs> All right, who wants to put their hand up and, and, and answer this one? So then Nick can say you're wrong. <laughs> so how many times is that all this? But I did a month ago. Um the the answer to this question is no, it doesn't it doesn't affect discovery or indexing. However, it depends on the site. It depends on what you're trying to do with those no index pages. The, the answer is, is no, it doesn't affect the index. Because who would, the way that we would understand the index is just those are pages that shouldn't be in the index. So they say, okay, they call it and they see it as, okay, let's put that aside and they keep understanding the rest of the website. Mm. 
Yeah, what about um things I don't think you guys that have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I get very excited. Yeah. What about internal links then? Is that going to affect the way what uh, Google calls the entire website? So yes, internal link on a no index page. Yeah. Yep. So okay. yes, internal link. So the question was, if does internal linking affect the way Google calls? Okay, you're right. Yes. 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 In, in that in that case, yes. Um, but we are branching off too much. <laughs> the answer is um, it doesn't carry any unintended effects when it comes to crawling and indexing. Yay! Guess who wins again? <laughs> That's okay. We should have disqualified. Him. <laughs> just a, a novice question. It's got a really large site. Would it impact crawlability? Because it has to crawl for then no index, or is it only for the no index? The only, the only time that I've seen that, that, the only time I've seen that, which was a really, really fun thread that we talked about on the invite only Slack channel. So come find me after this if you want to be in on that. Yeah. Um, we judge you to webinar you like that. There is no judgment. There is no judgment. But it's it's only open to people who actually come to these things um, or DM me specifically. Um, just because, like, I just want to maintain. Um... <laughs> I, just, I just want to maintain the quality um, because, like, if there's like you know, if there's like people that are just coming on and just trying to sell you something or spam you something or yeah, trying to. Yeah, so links. I, I, um, I accidentally approved people in the LinkedIn group. They're just like, hey, check out this LinkedIn virus spam. It like, was you. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Okay. Um, we, we, we did have this instance where there was like a whole um, subfolder that was disallowed through robots.txt and that was getting indexed, even though it had no index tags on it. Um, which was kind of really annoying. <laughs> it was a whole thing. Um, but the how you actually have to treat that is you have to take off the disallow to allow um, the crawler to go through all these garbage pages to rediscover and find the no index, then to get it taken out of the index, and then happy days, like your life is a little bit nicer. Was there a reason why you couldn't use the remove URLs tool in Google Search Console for that particular use case? Six months. Yeah, you just keep copying it up. Go ahead. <laughs> how, like, how do we how do we how do we get all of them? Like we were only a sample size of a thousand. Like we knew that this was happening to literally oh, hundreds of thousands. Was this like pages. unique like patterns of your own? You couldn't just do a while. Yeah, no, no. There was no there's no fun, easy way to, to uh, get rid of just... this. Because there was so many there were so many different types of disallows, there was so many dis different types where there'd be mm. no indexed. And then one day Google was just like, hmm, you can fix that big thing. <laughs> so annoying. It's just like that's what Google says, sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they basically exist like Muppets in my head, so um, you know. <laughs> okay, this is a sincere question. Sure. <laughs> like I'm not trying to be like, oh gotcha. But like when you uh know in that page, like I've heard that it's eventually treated as no follow. And the question was talking about discoverability. So if you're after like a year, right? Like sure. Guess, yeah, but if you, if you had a lot of no index pages and they were being treated as no follow eventually, okay. and the the internal linking structure of your site included those no index pages, mm -hmm. would that eventually affect discoverability? But they still won't ever. It's not like they're not going to crawl it anymore. It's like mm -hmm. more of a because no, like it's like if you suddenly take off the no index and it's been like that for four years, and suddenly you're like YOLO, let's take off the no index, like. Same time, whenever you take over a client, for example, I once had uh, took over El Gas, who their brilliant X and uh, SEO no index the homepage because it was strategically smart or whatever for like four years. But like, it's not like the homepage would never get crawled again. It's just like, well, I guess we just won't apply any of the um, like link metrics and whatever we can do internally to calculate from that no follow page after like a long time. But they still call it, they still discover, they're still in that refresh, you know, when you have the refresh and discovery, they're still in that little refresh file. And I check it every once in a while just to see, it's like um, Google Hunting, just to see that one time it takes up that no index. You know, because it just because there's a no index now doesn't mean it has a no index forever. Um, you know, yeah. and I would also encourage people to like try using like um, unavailable after, it's kind of a better directive than yeah. no index, to be honest with you, um, but for various situations. Um, but what if you had a landing page where you accessed 
if you access sub pages that weren't particularly well linked to the parts of the site, and that landing page has no follow. Is it temporary or permanent? It's permanent. You don't you don't want that page indexed and all. You want it to show up in the same Well, I mean, does it have to be HTML? Like, can you use? I would use uh, specifically JavaScript. Well, I would do that in Melbourne next directory. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. We do have another question down the back. Do you do you consider a no follow as a do not pass attribution or a I just don't. Oh, I don't want to post it from a link from a link equity standpoint. Google have admitted that they do attribute information from no follow, UGC, and all the various equivalents of no follow. It's not like um, back, like, but it doesn't mean like they pass through like page rank specifically. It's more like um, important. Things. It's kind of like unlinked mentions, that kind of stuff. Like they get important context. I have linked to. I've intentionally linked to pages that are blocked by robust.txt, for example, transaction pages um, as a cut button, that kind of stuff. And I know for a fact that even though it's blocked by robots.txt and Google won't follow that link, the fact that it's being linked at all in a very particular kind of text or a very particular context, Google can do the math internally to get some kind of context to understand that, okay, maybe add to card, which I can't crawl due to robots.txt shenanigans, has, it's like if they did schema properly, it probably would have an action and have an add to card action. I'm going to guess that's what they mean by this add to card button I see in every single page. Oh, they just creeped off on me. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I've also seen that when um, they've no forward internal links to an entire website. Like, it would just like, ah, oh, this looks like an error. This is just ridiculous. I don't know if I can no follow link really just means like I, I don't uh, pass it. I don't think attribution should be passed because I don't, I don't believe that the landing page, I, I can't vouch for the content on the landing page. But to Google what it's just like, it's just a link. Mm. Thank you so much, guys. All right. That was the first quiz we've ever done. Ah. <laughs> I, I need, uh, we need like a little I survived the SU Collective quiz. So all, all feedback to at Zing Ranger SEO. So good. Oh, God. <laughs> um, thank you so much, guys, for that. Um, I'm going to pass the mic on um, to the person that um, inspires me, who um, who pushes me further to try new things and to look at big problems and think how can I do these quicker because I know that there that it is possible and that person is Sally Mills. Woo! -hoo! <laughs> okay. Yay. Yay. Also, if you're leaving, please come see me and get a photo because this is my last one. Okay. 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 Okay, so I'm hoping by the end of my little presentation tonight that you guys can walk away and build your own um, programmatic SEO website based on a set of data. So hoping that this will be helpful. Um, that's Vine Sal, um, technical on-page SEO enthusiast. I've been in the industry for about probably eight years, mainly in-house within the financial space. Um, prior to that, I was a junior web developer for a little while there. Um, I've built out quite a few different sort of programmatic sites, and it was funny when Nick was like to me, hey, Sal, come talk about programmatic websites. And I went, I don't know what you What's a programmatic website? What's a programmatic SEO? And I think literally like four weeks later, I was like, oh, yeah, I just migrated a website that was programmatic, and it's just this new buzzword on the market that everyone seems to be talking about. But the web dev industry has been doing it for a very, very long time. So it's not new. <laughs> it's just the terminology is new. Um, aside from that, I do a little bit of Python as well. So I've done quite a bit of migrating websites and learning to migrate content through Python from one CMS into another CMS, which is quite, quite a bit of fun. Um, and on top of that, I organize the Brisbane SEO beers in Brisbane. So I'm building a little community very similar to you guys. Um, I think this community actually started in Brisbane back in 2011, maybe? Stolen Valor. Yeah, stole it, just left us to burn like a couple of pieces. <laughs> but here we go. Um, now, I thought I'd start with who actually knows what programmatic web um, SEO is. Yeah, see, this is how I felt when I heard about it too, because it's like, okay, everyone's talking about it. I Googled it, and the articles are not really very good, they're not very helpful. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go in explaining what it is. So as I see it, 
it is taking a set of data, taking one website template, and then pumping out many, many different landing pages. So that's why I find a learn is to look at examples because it's a lot easier once you see it in the flesh compared to looking at a data set and try to imagine that. Um, so as I said, it's not a new idea. Brands have been doing it for years. Um, TripAdvisor is the standard example that comes up. So TripAdvisor, you can search anything, things to do in Paris, things to do in Melbourne, things to do in Brisbane, and they'll just always pop up. And all they're really doing each time is they're replacing basically key keywords in their pages, they're then aggregating various sort of event activity pages into one area and then just pumping them out like Google crawl them and letting users basically tell Google, okay, these are useful. And we can see that by the way that Google's now stealing their whole idea by trying to do things to do in various places. Another example that I love, um, Zapier. Now I think Zapier is a cooler example because um, the difference there is that all the keyword volumes for sort of things to do stuff is really quite big. They're big competitive terms. They're quite hard to capture. Us as sort of SEOs wanting to build our own side project, we're not going to target them. It's going to take a lot of effort to go rank for them. Zapier, however, are targeting really, really long tail terms that basically have very low search volume. Most of the time tools will say zero and I'll prove to you guys tonight that just because it says zero doesn't mean that there's not volume behind it. Um, so what they do is they go, let's just say the keyword connect Google Sheets to MailChimp or connect Notion to Google Cal Cal Calendar or connect eBay to zero. And they basically pumped out a whole heap of landing pages. I think there is what, 7,000 of these that they have that basically takes two of the applications that they connect and pumps out a page and just pulls in data from their database on what that application does. So it's super cool. And if you have a look at their search volumes, most of them are tiny. There's very little search volume around it, but I just know for a fact that it's killing it because if you guys have tried to connect two apps, they're always there. Everything I popped in to Google, they would pop up. Let's do some Australian examples because ignore the US. So I have a bit of a crush on realestate.com.au. <laughs> yeah, like I always have looked at their website and I remember trying to build out sort of programmatic pages of cancer back in the day going, how are they getting people around their website to like all the different pages on real estate documentary? And you can just chuck in anything, you go four bedroom house to rent in Turingo. You guys are gonna learn some Queensland suburbs tonight. <laughs> By the way, I tried to do it with Melbourne, but I just, I don't know enough about the suburbs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nick's gonna know, yeah, you'll, you'll follow. I have put in Frankston, so the, Brisbane guys told me that Frankston's quite a dodgy suburb. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's going to work very really well with my example. My <laughs> Maybe it's improving. I live in a dodgy suburb in Brisbane, which I'll learn about too. So. <laughs> no, so Turinga's like, actually quite a nice one. Maruka. Oh, yeah. Turinga's gorgeous, actually. Um, but as you can see, that you can replace basically anything, whether it's house, unit, rent, buy, suburb, number of bedrooms, and they'll always pop up. And you can see that on their pages, all they're really doing is replacing key data points on the page, pulling through their database, and then also changing the URL. Another example, and now this one here is actually my baby from work. This is the one that I went, oh yeah, I do, I have done programmatic website. <laughs> um, so if you have a look at Frankston suburb profile, um, you get a few different ones. So I think Homely is a really interesting example. Homely really stands out different from your real estate document use, your YIPs, as I call it, um, because what they're doing is they're using user-generated stuff. So people are going in there and reviewing it rather than, yes, they are pulling in variables to do their stuff, but they're also using their audience to then grow their whole website more. So that user-generated approach as well. Usually this is the exact moment where someone goes, why doesn't Google think this is unique, this is duplicate content. I was thinking that. There you go. I was like, why hasn't anyone asked me that? <laughs> Usually I don't even make it to this slide before people ask me that one. Exactly. Yeah, user intent. So if someone's coming through, they're clicking on Yip, they're landing here, they're getting all the information they want, it's answering their query, it is basically unique enough, why would Google not rank them? 
and they're getting all the user signs that it's not duplicate and that it's actually providing value and it's different enough. Okay, let's get into some fun. Shall we build a simple programmatic website together? Yeah. <laughs> in this short amount of time. So you guys are gonna have to learn WordPress in your own time. I don't have time to teach about one of this session, but that's okay. So I quickly realized I can't talk about very much of my in-house data, so I wanted to be able to give you guys something real to look at. So on the 1st of November, I, I launched safesuburbs.com.au. Um, so safesuburbs.com.au is built from a Queensland Division police data, so this is basically data of different offences around Queensland. So it's murders, it's robberies, it's a whole heap of different assaults, everything. Um, this is not my right deck, but that's okay, we'll work with it. Anyway, um, this whole thing is built around targeting low volume, um, low competition keywords. So all the keywords that it targets about probably 10 max, if not usually zero. Okay, so I started in Google. My, where I always love to do keyword research is Google. I think it's the most valuable place to start because it basically tells you what to what to write about, gives you suggestions, and then you'll notice throughout a lot of my screenshots, I've hooked in um, keywords everywhere. I couldn't do my job without keywords everywhere. Like I can't. I don't think I could do it successfully. I love that it also like builds it into the search console as mm -hmm. well, so you'll also see all the query data and all the search volume yeah. in search console. What a gift! Yeah, it's amazing. So it's really keywords everywhere. <laughs> okay, so Maruka, this is the suburb I live in. Now, if anyone knows anything about Brisbane, Maruka's got a bad rap. It's in the last little while, it's very much improved. Um, it used to be all. Huh? Yes, yeah, since, since I moved, it really just. It was really weird. I don't know. It's great. Yeah. Now, Having done sort of programmatic websites with suburb data and stuff before, I'm quite comfortable with suburbs. So I went, okay, let's start with my own suburbs. <laughs> so up top you've got, is Maruka a safe suburb? Is Maruka a good suburb? Um, is it a good place to live? Is it a bad suburb? So you're already straight away going, okay, there's quite a bit of stuff we could work with there. Um, whenever I'm doing this sort of stuff, you're just gonna go back to primary school of the who, what, when, where, why is Oh, I don't know if that means an art, but it's too well in the but yeah. High school, too. High school. It doesn't fit around here. Yeah, yeah, not that. The only got friends here. Okay, my second favourite tool owned by one of my least favourite SEOs. <laughs> 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 I was like, should I say that joke? Okay, I love Ants the Public because it aggregates everything and it also works with keywords everywhere, too. Oh. Yes, makes your life so much better. So let's chuck in my suburb, Maruka. You get a whole heap of different sort of similar stuff to what we just saw, but a bit more broken down. Is it dangerous? Same stuff as those drop downs because um, Answer the Public does basically take those suggestions. Let's do another one. Let's do Frankston, which I've learned about. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this. <laughs> Why is Frankston so bad? <laughs> They keep yeah. us employed, guys. Yeah. <laughs> our far expansion from CBD is how in Frankston and Frank's call. Ah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love Frankston. I don't know how it's how it's going to be. Essentially, in Frankston. Why is that not like it? Okay, you guys get the idea. It's pretty clear that there's definitely a pattern here about whether it's bad, whether it's safe. Why is it so cheap? I did a whole heap of other ones. And this was actually a lot neater earlier, so I don't know what I sent you. But that's okay. Oh, sorry, I, I, I took it from PowerPoint to slides and it oh. kind of always it's just gets format. That's okay, we'll work with it because I probably like probably got the ones to get the <laughs> So sorry. And everything's probably in there. It'll be fine. I'm destroying the eight times. <laughs> Look, <laughs> the point is I chucked a whole heap of other ones in there. You've got Anala, which is another great Queensland suburb. 
<laughs> got China's Tower, you've got Kabulcha, and all of them sort of paint that same picture of is it a good suburb, is it safe, is it safe for the beach? So we've gone, you know what, I'm pretty confident with um, that sort of topic there. Now the next thing I need to do, which is really blurry, is actually go to Google and see what the SERPs do because we can't really build a website unless we know that it's going to be okay to rank, right? So we chuck in, is Maruka safe? And this is really clear for you guys to read, so it's great. Um, we can straight away see we've got a paragraph feature snippet at the top. That straight away is an opportunity to me because that means that we can jump from down here up to there just by structuring content the right way. Um, I also do a few other ones, and sometimes you get a table snippet there. Um, there's the people also ask, which means that there's definitely more in that topic space. People are asking questions, there's variation, and people want more data. You have two programmatic SEO websites there. You've got homely.com.am, you've got microverbs. Now, neither of these websites focused on safe suburbs at all. They basically had no Queensland police data on it. It was very much just the user reviewing their suburb. Oh, so it's like a subheading or sub figure. Yeah. It's a third tier. Well, they didn't even talk about safe suburbs. It's just people basically like, going, I like my suburb. It's a safe suburb. Google's like yeah. keyword found. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no one's doing it. <laughs> And the other really good sign I have here is that Reddit is ranking, which means that people are looking for more information on suburbs. So they're actively wanting it, and Reddit's just a great source. And finally, the Queensland Police have an article from 2019, which is really weird, and I found it interesting that their 2019 um, article's ranking, but their crime map one is not. Who does the SEO? Anyone here? It's like someone just hitched them. <laughs> Let's do Fangston as well. So same thing, feature snippet with old government data is at the top. So that's quite highly someone did a click on there. Like, oh, that's not very recent. Um, people also asked, Homely's in there again, Reddit again, and then one generic article with minimal hard data in it, and then one actually really good in-depth article in there. And I think that was the one ranking at the bottom, which is a bit sad that we put in all that work, but it might also show that people searching that just want quick information. They want that quick data, they don't want to read it all. People are idiots. People are idiots. The one thing you take away from yeah. <laughs> yeah, Put your face in the snap, like the quote. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think the next problem you guys are always going to have is where the hell do I get data from to build a programmatic <coughs> website? Now, there's heaps of different options out there. Um, government data. Now, what's great about government data is it's you can use it. You can build things out of it. It's open. Um, this is the Queensland Open Data Portal. There's also a Victorian Open Data Portal as well. So you can go in there, you can browse everything, you can download CSVs, it works. You could use an API, for example, with um, my website, your investment can be made, and we use CoreLogic, as do a lot of other, I think Domain uses them heaps. So there's APIs out there you could use for data. User generated content, which Homely was doing there with the reviews. GPT-3, which is very popular as of Today, if you guys have been on Twitter, best <laughs> chatbot ever. Best chatbot. <laughs> um, you can upload a CSV data if you collect it, a CSV of data you've collated. So maybe you have internal stuff. You have internal stuff that you can actually just use and put together and spit out pages. Um, or you actually have databases within your company that you connect straight to. And finally, you could also go and scrape data, which I morally don't love. Easy enough to do, but do you really want to be known the person that built a website that's just all stolen data? Yeah. Unless you're referencing them, then you ask permission. <laughs> okay. So I chucked it into Quinsar Gummit, crime statistics. Now, this is what's cool about this data portal is that it's got Creative Commons Attribution 3, which means that you can use it. You just have to make sure that you're referencing the source. So it gives you where you don't have a play. <laughs> Now, the next thing you probably need to do is clean the data because no CSV gets ever going to be in the format that you actually want it to be. Um, the Queensland Police one is just basically by every single month since 2001 <laughs> for every single summer. So I had to very much go and aggregate it together, put it into years, go, okay, I'm not going to talk about data from 2017 to 2022 because I built this in a month. Um, you might have to do uh, um, averages, so I chucked in below and above averages so that when people run my page, they sort of have an idea because you don't generally know how many offences, how many murders, it's the standard average. 
So you've got that stat there as well. <laughs> Surprising, to be honest. Murder's happening all the time. <laughs> <laughs> if it says it's a good murder suburb, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I'm going to go for the murder suburb with zero next to the murder, but they're sort of hard to come by, to be honest. Good real estate turnover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. maybe cheap house pies, maybe grab this economy. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing you want to be doing is actually planning out what your page is going to look like. And because we're SEOs, we can actually design a page so that it ranks well. So I designed mine with obviously starting at the URL. I've got Queensland is suburb name safe. So I had the thought that maybe I'll build out more states one day, just starting with Queensland. So I want to be able to separate that data down the track. So I only put Queensland in front. Um, H1 is suburb name safe. Is suburb Queensland safe? Then 40 to 50 words below it because if you want to target a paragraph feature snippet, let's say it again and again. A H1, a H2, then 40 to 50 words underneath it. We used to do it at Canada all the time just to basically go and steal feature snippets and 40, 50 words underneath the H2. Seems to do the trick again and again. I'm a big lover of jump links because then you'll get them appearing in the search results. So why not get people jumping and they go, oh, they've got stuff for robberies. Click straight through to that. And prostitution. And prostitution. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to point that one out. It's always <laughs> <laughs> you give it a great, like it's good for prostitution. Yeah. One day. One day. One day. <laughs> the destination for prostitution. Um, then where my data's come from, and also linking out. I think linking out is really, really important because we should be going, this is where I got the data from, we're trustworthy, and actually linking and giving credit to the Queensland Police. EAT. EAT. And then through to all these areas, and you can't, I couldn't fit on the slide, but you also have tables as well. So everything's in the tables, which as we saw, can appear in feature steps too. Okay, building a system. Now, I was super lucky, safesuburbs.com.au was available. It's just your love to register it. Yeah. I did, I was like, done, three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so that was lucky. Um, now, I sort of, when I started looking at how I was gonna build this, I sort of had my SEO hat on and not my web dev hat on. And I went, oh, there's all these cool, like, new plugins and, like, things being created by SEOs for programmatic SEO. And I had, they all cost money every month. <laughs> and I had to take a step back and went, okay, web dev, people have been doing this for years. There must be something out there. So that's where I came across multiple page generator. It's free to set up um, one project. So you can build up however many pages you want of a set of data for free with WordPress. So this whole project cost me what, I don't want to talk about my hosting fees on other projects, but $30 per domain. Um, the other great thing about this one, and you're gonna to have to keep an eye on whatever plugin you decide to go, is it actually SEO friendly? This one pumps out a sitemap. You can put all your um, variables into metadata. You can um, even do like internal linking stuff, which I'll talk about later. And it was really cool to um, spin everything out. If you're working in enterprise software um, and within sort of in-house or with clients, they should have developers that can do this. So there's no reason. Sure, sure, sure. 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 <laughs> you may have to guide them. Okay. Hold their hand a little bit. You can always let it go. Yeah, you can always That's let it go. Never too late. <laughs> or use in links. Now, the other thing that I thought was really important was the flexibility to run if statements. Because if you can do if statements through whatever you're building, it means that you can sort of make your sort of your content more in depth and more variable and more unique because you can sort of not explain this one well, but you can customize it more. Because you can go if this data point equals this, then I want to do this. Okay. Templates for pages. I'm so sorry, it was a slide. So I think it's I think it's Google. Google. I'm learning Google. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can always blame Google. That's fine. <laughs> it's stupid Google. It was an artistic decision. Like, you know, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> anyway, I don't think that as well, but I probably should have a proper one. But that's okay. It's fine. You guys can get the gist of it. So this is the template that I built within that. Um, you can't fully see it, but there's basically variable stuff going on here. There's variables in the paragraphs, and there's variables in these paragraphs too. And then that will pump out 336 pages based on my data. 
So all you got to focus on is one page, getting that one right, and then go and fact check a bunch of yours. That's the one for Acacia Rich. And that's one for Agnes Water, which is another random suburb, which I've been actually been to soon. So yeah, that's two of 336. Um, now, I think the next challenge with programmatic is how are you going to link to all of these pages? Like that's a really, how are you going to, you can't get them there. Um, I'm actually going to start at the bottom. Remember that Google can't call an internal link search box, a search box. I think people forget this all the time when we were building YIP, um, the designers and the devs just thought, oh, we'll just put a, we'll just put a search box on there and then the users can get to every single different suburb page. But I went, well, Google's not going to get there. Google's not going to link it. Um, so remember that you can just put a bunch of links on a page. It's the easiest solution. Put them on a page, hide them behind an accordion. What's your uncle? Done. <laughs> the amount of times I've used that to solve stupid problems, like years ago I had um, a page that was only um, clients like Rendered, Rendered, and it was all the articles basically that were on the site. Google couldn't call any of the articles. I had no web dev um, resources at Allianz, so what did I do? I just chucked an accordion on the page with all the links in it. Done. <laughs> yeah. Easy solution. <laughs> okay, um, now you want to prioritize your important pages first. So I actually didn't prioritize my important pages first because I didn't have enough data to decide what my important pages were. I had an idea just from general knowledge of Queensland. Um, so I actually waited until I had a little bit of data in Search Console to then build out the menu list of popular suburbs. Is it popular by suburb size or which is the most sketches? Well, it looks like it's the most sketches. <laughs> 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 it's popular for the users on my website. <laughs> <laughs> um, remember to do a sitemap, model page generate. Did a sitemap for me, which was sick. Um, where possible, use dynamic links to automate linking and cross-linking. So what I did at the bottom of every single page is had this little block here, which pulls through, I think, 15 links to various other suburbs and actually randomizes. So, every time, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a bit fun, but <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you think that's good? Because it's not the stable um, source of truth of like how the links matter to that page. At that point, it's basically like having a random number there. So those links will have, I mean, it's good for discovery, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Like, but like, if there's a way that you could mathematically devise the way that the links would go for each one, so that you're linking like the 15 nearest suburbs, and then it all kind of worked out, that would be much preferable because yeah. links that are stable are way better than links that happen to pop in and out. Because yeah. that's uh, based on my observations. Anyway, um, yeah, and I do agree. Um, and that's where one day I would create actual hubs yeah. and I would hub together different pages. Hub. Is there a way you could just use a modular function with like the URL or ID and then like you have a base of like 64 patterns of those 15 URLs and that way you can, that's what I used to do with Shopify, was that I, instead of like say, like, instead of um, that, it was like template event descriptions, I would have 16 versions of the template and then based on like the ID of the page or the product, I would modulate that by 16 and basically have evenly distributed random distributions what of it. I was thinking of just doing was just building it into my CSV. Yeah. Yeah. So and getting, it. yeah, and just getting basically data on which the suburbs are closest to those ones and then have those ones automatically appear down. Yeah, the that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I will. <laughs> But yeah, the next step would very much be actually hubbing that stuff yeah. um, and having sort of South Brisbane or Cairns or Gold Coast. Or... What about councils? Yeah, council regions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. General with the council. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You'd, and it's heaps of different, like, yeah. I think it's also, it's an LGAs as well. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, you can definitely, there's a lot of stuff that we keep doing to further this down the track. How did it go? Oh no, this is where my numbers are from there. So I will read them out to you. Oh, those ones are all right though. That's all right. Okay. So this is a month of data. I, I think this is today's anyway, so it's all right. 126 clicks from Google. It's been, it was indexed on the 1st of um, November, which I am 
very pleased with. I will just hand over a month old. It's had um, 1,300 impressions. Obviously, its average position is going to go wacko for the next little while while it works out where it wants to be. Um, I think what I really wanted to raise on this slide, though, was all of this, was all this stuff coming through where impressions are well over 10 and probably not even, even a month for a lot of these. And keywords everywhere has been like zero, 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 zero. So it just shows again that just because the tool says zero doesn't mean that the search volume is actually zero. Um, and there's so much opportunity with this site to keep doing more things. You could add reviews, cities, LDA data, APIs to automate it. I think the Queensland Police actually do have an API for this. So if I feel like doing that, I could put that in. You can um, make a lot of money by um, advertising lots of Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll see how this goes. I might just be right. <laughs> <laughs> nice and how. We've got money here. <laughs> um, obviously more states. I've only done Queensland, which is not the biggest state. If I wanted to take this project seriously, I probably would have started in Victoria or New South Wales. Because Queensland is the experimental dummy. Yes, because I know it is more dodgy suburbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah more it's like, <laughs> wow, there's like one in two dodgy suburbs. <laughs> 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 but yeah. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> I think that's probably also the challenge of this website going forward as well, is actually scoring, providing a, a quick scoring. A scoring system. Like All I did was above and below, which the doesn't really... The dodge scale, the... Yeah, the yeah, the the yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like maybe you walk on with But this is, this yeah. is like the, the project six to 12 months down the track. Yeah, uh, is, is you saw it here. Lower position is better, right? Okay, so this is why I always am explaining to um, more fresh SEOs. Just because the positions come down doesn't mean it's a bad thing. So, what's actually happened is, yeah, the impressions have come up, which means you're actually getting more keywords in there. I think the clicks have gone up too. Clicks have gone up too, which means your average impression is going to come down. Because you're actually ranking for more keywords. So if the start of the month the only keywords you're getting was safesuburbs.com.au, which is always number one because it's the only safe suburbs that come to you, the fact that her average position went from one to forty or whatever is actually a good thing because it means more things to speak out. Uh, and also that particular view, don't look at average position there because it's an average of an average of an average. So like use it as an indicator is not useful at all. Like average position at you know, if you have to break it down, it has to be specifically um, Singular keyword, singular device, singular, um, you know, um, URL. And other than that, you're actually applying multiple averages together, which is more of like an amoeba yeah. of averages as opposed to like a definitive. It's not like a, hey, my so much tracking thing. No, no, no. It's not like your little rank tracker or anything like that. It's a very different metric. Mode would no, no be better than average at that point. Right? It's like, it's the wrong word to use. It's not average. It's like a. Aggregate average. Aggregate. It's getting ratio. Aggregate position <laughs> is a better a better word than average position or something like that. It's like a, a good metric to just see which people are yeah, you, you know what? It makes other people happy to think that it's people a number. People are Just give it to other people. Just no, no, it's 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 use it to really, really specific yeah, terms. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in my original screenshot, I didn't even have average position in there, but I was like, you know, it's still right. interesting. And I think this is really educational because a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. No, I don't. But I did put this in here for more data people. Let's see what else I put in here. I also put this one in here that I wanted to show you guys. So I'm not even fully indexed yet. Well. Yeah, it's still wow. baby. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Can I know how, how you got so many pages in next? Because I'm doing a program at Excited of Walnut because I've got like 10,000 euros. You probably started too big. Yeah. Yeah. From what I've heard is Absolutely. that if you chuck too much in too quickly, and I haven't tested this personally, but from what I've heard, you chuck too much in there, Google's like, oh, this was a bit launch. Yeah. yeah. We kind of know. Do, do those pages, like, does your CMS put those in the site? Every page that's generated? Yeah. Do you generate the HTML site? Yeah, it generates for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it generates an XML site. Oh, yeah, you could also do a HTML site. one, yeah. 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 Yeah, you could, yeah. And you, that, I've sort of, in a way, done that on the homepage. I've just linked every single one on the homepage. Oh, so it's a flush structure. Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. But it's, it's very small, that's like 300. Yeah, 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do a site map per state in the future? If you, if you no, to be honest, no, because to it's not going to be that many URLs. You'll have to change the URLs, but then instead of like your is Queensland suburb blah 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 safe, you have to do slash Queensland slash suburb slash safe. Uh, yeah, I just yeah, I didn't want to overcomplicate it. I thought flat uh, structure and then I can well it's for each each time it's like fifty thousand URLs, like you don't ever get that. There aren't fifty thousand. It's suburbs. only sixteen thousand suburbs, I think, in yeah. Australia. And the other thing I should note with this is this is this is based on police district uh, data. Right. So it doesn't actually have every single suburb in there either. Mm. So it is small. Cause it depends. Okay, <laughs> yeah. That's if you want to see impressions next to that one. Delicious. Delicious. That's GA4, which I'm learning to use, and I'm very proud of myself. I found, I found a graph! <laughs> and I did have a thank you slide. Thank you! That was awesome. Thank you so much for your great time. I'm going to get you to stay up there because I'm sure there's like heaps of really, really great questions. Uh, I'm just going to scan the room. Yeah, we got a question right at the back. How are you at catching? Sports. Really good presentation. Uh, really interesting. I uh, wanted to know how you would go about monetizing it and what kinds of ways you would do that. <laughs> well, oh, first off, I was just going to chuck some freaking ads on there to begin with. We're going to chuck some ads, and then down the track, maybe there are um, being in the property world a little bit with yep. There's plenty of um, people that basically want to get leads from you, so it could be affiliate as well down the track. We did like dentists for each of the suburbs. Some of the average cost of on dentists is like eight dollars, and we get a commission on those books. I mean, like some other like some other practice services that are high cost keywords. So like, any friend that you have in CBC will get high cost book with keywords. You just want to advertise those things on your site. You'll make that like, it'll just monetize itself. And I'm gonna be talking to you later because yeah. that's where my knowledge is. I just asked for a ten percent commission. I help you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need on this thing. Save some of the Save some. Ten percent. I, I like if you look at my thing, you probably did a thing the other week about people spamming Google to get money. So they do like um, they do a social media ad for like really low cost dentistry, and they literally steal some of our clients' ads, like images and headlines, but they just put a crazy offer on it. They get the cost per click on social media at like ten cents. They drive them to an aggregate page of just Google search partner network ads, and then they get like a dollar on the click when somebody clicks on it. So they're paying ten cents to make a dollar. So like they would do that like. Drive 10, to a side. <laughs> that, that, that also happened a lot with like emergency and then service type queries as well, yeah. um, which is really annoying. We worked with like a small town, like little plumber and a scaffolder, and it was like, well, emergency queries just aren't relevant to us because this is just what's happening within this space. Like, I like even like tweeted at Google, being like, is there anything we can do about this? Because this is. This is money from it. Share yeah, you will see like one page websites with those like like this exponential curve of, of links pointing to it, and then it will get de indexed within a couple of weeks. But then they make bank. Yeah. 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 I, I, I admire them, I think they're smart. Yeah, I, 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 I respect they, the game. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. I, I get pissed off about it, but I respect it. But I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm scanning the room because I've got a bunch of questions. All right. <laughs> you and Peter spoke a little bit about the duplicate content thing there, and just you know, when I see this, I know you guys have done really well, programmatic websites, so it just seems to fly in the face of everything we talk about make original content, don't do duplicate. Then, then, as you're saying, like realestate.com.au ranks like every time, like. What can we take from this? Do we just do we just go our own sites and start doing um things like you know starting products plus every use case plus everything and expect to rank or is there any best practices? I think it just it depends what oh, the search is. <laughs> but 
do the Google search, what's ranking in there. This is a very specific thing where people don't really want, like they're not even going to read the content very much. They're going to look at the data points. The data points is what they're there for. Pre school. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Kind of, it's kind of a gut check. Like if you search like, <laughs> MacBook Pro 128 gigabyte, like you know, something's hyper specific. Would you want a page that's dedicated to like its battery, like you know, like it's like you know, it's like MacBook battery, like all about the battery. So like, or you expect to actually land on the product page and read the specification? Like it's up to the user's expectations of what kind of page you're expecting when they're searching. Like if they got a uh, too hyper specific page, it's probably not a good thing. If they got something that's too broad, it's also good. So Google, use your eyes, and then and then trust it until the next algorithm update ships everything. And I think a really big key takeaway is that she's using all the data and collating it into a format that she knows from experience that is going to be able to be seen and understood by search engines. So she's like essentially helping to train machine learning that's crawling through her site to be able to get all these data points and find it as meaningful content, content to be able to mark up um, you know, within their full links. And I think that's a really, really interesting takeaway from this. Like, you know, you think about your site, you think about the way that you're doing this. Like, a lot of what we as SEOs need to influence is the UX, is the layout, is the way that information is presented on the page, because that has a really, really big flow and effect. And if you're not really looking at all gaps of that or having these kinds of conversations, you could be leaving like up to 60% of, of the potential just on the table because you just haven't thought about it. So I think that's a really, really impressive takeaway from this presentation. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks, All right. So how long did it take you? <laughs> how long did it take you to learn I, oh, Python? Oh God, you want to talk about Python? I don't even know if I'm real with Python yet. You know, I think it's like Python. Yeah. Well, I think that's great right, because I used to have a script where. You know how sometimes you download images and then there'd be brackets in the images, and you're like, I don't want the freaking brackets and all these images, and I want to rename them. So I had a script that would basically remove all the brackets and change them to hyphens, and I lost that script. First thing I did with that chat box today was go write me a Python script you, you know to remove <laughs> brackets from image files. You know what I did with the chat box? I said, list me all the 20 EPL themes and listed them. I said, convert it to a HTML table. I said, uh, create the schema markup, and it did it all. Yeah, uh, it's insane. Oh, it was awesome. So I don't need Python anymore. If you don't need programmers anymore, like some of my uh, co-workers, some of my 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 co-workers converted like React to Svelte, like in one go, and they're like, I'll convert this to Python, and they're like, well, that's our jobs. Like it says there. So we're all going to lose our jobs, so we're going to have to be, we're all going to become prop masters, and like, you know, prop tinkerers, and we're going to be, Starting the new prompt optimization meetup. <laughs> it was always stuck on training. Yeah. I mean, yeah, stuck at it first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, like, my insight on this, I'm not an SEO, it's not my space, but what I love about what you've done is you saw the gap in the market, and I think that's the starting point. You saw that the things that were indexing didn't deserve to be there, and you were like, I'm going to trump this. And I think you've done it, like, I think it's really genius. So, like, thank you for coming in today and sharing how you use, like, as particular. Thanks, best for last. Um, but I think the insight was not programmatic for me. Like I think that's really cool. But actually, the insight was look at the gap in the market and exploit it because that's what SEO really is. It's fundamental. Like there's always a gap to explore, and if you understand that well, the question is how do I exploit it? And it might be programmatic, or it might be schema. Yeah, where can I add value? Yeah, yeah. Can I add value? But I, I really liked it. Like it's, I think I come to a lot of these, not not often enough, but I think it was one of the most insightful that I've seen. Well, thank you. I think the lesson is just Google. Yeah, like Google. Send up get keywords everywhere, and then Google. <laughs> um, kind of like speaking to what Peter was saying. Like, how do you how do you verify whether what you've inputted is actually going to work? Like, what is your testing methodology? I was shit scared it wasn't going to work, and then I was like, what am I going to talk about? And I'm like, it's time. <laughs> no, I had I had faith that it would work because of basically what was appearing in people. The other one. Yeah. Uh, and for the public. Yeah, I had faith because there was just so much backup data that people were searching it. Mm. And I just for so long, I, I spent a lot of time in Search Console. Like it's almost my preferred keyword research tool, to be honest. And I just see so much of our like pages getting picked up for keywords that don't have volume. And I think us SEOs are so 
obsessed with search volume when we should be thinking about the topic itself search and search intent and so right. taking that approach instead. But it's also that aggregate, like that, what you get with that for makes you get the aggregate of lots of little things. It's yeah. actually one really big thing. Yeah. And the other thing I'm excited to see what happens is, okay, are there going to be people searching how many robberies? In Maruka. Or prostitutes. Or prostitutes? Yeah. Prostitute yeah. offences. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there is a, I think it is ranking for escort something. Oh, which I did see and then I went there. <laughs> but I'm actually keen to see what else is going to come out of it because I think it's brought, it's the keywords are probably a lot broader than just is Maruka yeah. safe. It's going to be how many robberies and this, or how many of this and this. And, well, then yeah. you're just seeing emails like, here's a rise in keywords. It's good to have an update alert as well, <laughs> is, like is subscribe there... to an update alert. As so well. with this, I am hoping to blog about it. I'm going to redo my sellingmails.com, which has a really old HTML website on it. It's super fast, though, so take it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chuck, I am planning on putting um, just a basic WordPress up there and putting this in there. And I'm hoping to, what is it called, build in public? I think it's a hashtag. And uh, it's like you, because you're doing it publicly, you have to keep it updated and stuff. Like that. And also because I think too much, like too much SEO is hidden because we can't share stuff. So I'm hoping with this I can blog about it and you guys can actually see the raw data. If you want to look in Google Search Console, I'll give you read access. Like I, I just think it's sort of a learning opportunity. That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah. Now for me to actually blog. I think the I think the only time that I've really ever heard like other SEOs publicly doing that was like for the for the Wix competition. Like, can you rank the Wix? A good time. Yeah, and then like I think was like Dr. Mary Haynes won it. Um, but that was really based on links. <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing was a laugh. I enjoyed yeah. that. So that was a good moment of history. <laughs> yeah, super fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, is there any other questions on the board? Yeah. Hey, Sally. Hi. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, so really, really interesting um, presentation about programmatic SEO and how. Yeah, not a lot of people sort of think that they're sort of doing it, um, especially me as well. And the one thing that I'm always sort of curious when it comes to it is, what will be some like common mistakes that people come up against when they start to do it, or maybe they just don't necessarily know about it. Let's as talk they're... about mistakes that I did, because I didn't include that in this presentation in mine, was going to hopefully. It's the mm. polished product. Yeah, well, I only had a little bit of time, so I was like, oh, do I put mistakes? Um, first thing, always crawl it with screening crawl. Okay, first of all, start with the test site. I didn't because I couldn't be stopped. Um, <laughs> so don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Always Sorry, crawl you it. pretty much every client ever. I just like to do what I don't want to I don't even know if it's going to work, so I must just like pop it out and see what happens. And also, a new website, I figured Google wasn't going to be actively crawling it actively. Hopefully. Turns out it just picked up crawl. Um, so. Screaming Frog is your best friend, is probably where I would start. I, I love Screaming Frog, and I think they should lift their license. That's the only one I want to She didn't mean it! <laughs> yeah, at least start by limiting the Now we with Nick's comment about sitting upstairs. Yeah, it's going to be dubbed over with screaming frog is too expensive. Yeah, yeah. it should be free for all. It should be free. <laughs> yeah. 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 For it, then. Well, free for anybody who asks. Okay. Crawl with for screaming frog. Um, one mistake I made was, you know, those random links at the bottom, which one day I'll make much better. Um, I forgot the trailing slash on them. Oh. So I showed you guys the... A lying version of console. Would it at least redirect people or would it come on? Oh, they were kind of wise. They were kind of wise. That did make me happy, but it still pissed me off. Yeah. I wanted like perfect score. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now it's like, now it's like, oh, we've got canonical errors. Um, so check your trailing slashes. Check that um, they actually have, you have your redirects in place. So this tool does not do the trailing slash redirect. So I need to still go in and do that. So that's on the list there. Um, Underscores, capitals, yeah. Lowercase. I was luckily all good with that one. Was, was the data all clean, or did you have to change data? I did change data. <laughs> so, did that affect your URLs if your data was no. out of the so, okay. That's probably a good point. So, make sure you, you whatever URLs you decide, that's your URLs. Yeah. Like, there's 
many right. triple That's hyphens. That's one of mine for the rest of time, yeah. Many triple hyphens and apostrophes that have to be redacted to things that really screw pages with grammatic websites is the guy of a queen. Yep. Spaces and grammar is hard and you want to change it and change it hard. Yeah, exactly. So the moment I did those URLs, I was like, well, that's what it that's is it, now. It's it. a flat structure and that's my life now. <laughs> <laughs> but just because it's a flat structure doesn't mean that you can't internally link cups yeah. and make it a non flat structure. It's also a non flat so it's not like you're married. No. <laughs> yeah. It's flat time for the next album. Um, will you do a presentation on that thing? <laughs> I will, I'll try and keep everyone up there. I will. If it pays, I will. Yeah, when nice. I learn when Google penalized me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think Google will. If it's completely fresh, flat structure, like, how does that work with the breadcrumb structure? Breadcrumb schema? I don't think it has any breadcrumb schemes. Yeah, because looking at your URL, you didn't have a hierarchy. Do I like, even have breadcrumb schemes? No, it was domain no. and why blah 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 is dodgy or whatever the URL was. It was a screen for me. I don't even think I've got breadcrumbs in it. Yeah, because it's not like slash Queensland, slash no. suburb, slash... It. So you don't need it, I don't have any... It's all suburb, but like... It's but suburb, but slash prostitute. What's to say you could <laughs> still do breadcrumbs? <laughs> like, like it's, it's, if I was to make a Queensland page yeah. one day, I don't yeah. see why... Or you could like a pub, yeah. or like a council yeah. area, or whatever. Yeah, like I don't see why... It's a pseudo breadcrumb, it doesn't have to be URL or something. Yeah, I think as SEOs, we get really obsessed with URLs. Yeah, it's like, it doesn't really matter. I was saying the breadcrumbs go back to the hub, like the hub link out to the various suburbs. Yeah. We'll probably just check it three times and not just push publish at 11 o'clock at night on a Tuesday. Have someone else check it. Yeah, have someone else check it. So when I actually, I built this, I built this in one night, like my first version. <laughs> my first version, it was like a super like. <laughs> And it was originally just, I just was proud that I got the CSV in there, the pages out, and then the data displaying on the page. And it was just a raw table with all the data on the page. And then um, I was super proud I got that far. And then what I did is I slowly came back and I actually removed a lot of the data and just started drip feeding data in. So I started with just homicide. And I start added assaults and I added robberies and, <laughs> <laughs> and then prostitution. <laughs> and those impressions just went. Then it went. Yeah. Yeah. That's a happy ending. <laughs> 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 it's alright. He's a dad. <laughs> Thank you so much. Everyone, Sally Mills! Thank you! Thank you! And big shout out for me to invite me. I was like, oh my god, do you want to do it? I don't know, biggest shout out to you because A, you made a site for this presentation, and B, you flew all the way down from Brisbane to be here tonight with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Honestly. I'm back on. What, a, what an absolutely epic way to, to end things for the year of um, SEO collective um thank you very much um this is the part where i say what was that <laughs> google not now <laughs> that, 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 that is was... <laughs> so scary <laughs> um this is uh going to be my last seo collective what? As a host, not much ever going to do as a, as, a, <laughs> as a host, like I'll still rock up and things like that, but like it won't be me um, to to usher you in or even just be the person like in the corner looking really stressed, just like staring, um, just staring the laptop, like why aren't you working? Um, <laughs> so um, I just want to say, you know, I've been doing this for, for a number of years. Um, I love that there is a live stream element of this. Um, for not just people here in Melbourne, but people all around Australia, and you know, some people are even overseas who tune into this, which is awesome. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much uh, for such a rewarding time. Um, I've always thought of myself as a custodian, as someone who's just here to bolster forward, um, to provide a platform and, and space. Because when I started being out, I've been an SEO. Oh God. Ugh. God, so many years ago, like nearly 10 or something crazy, 
I didn't have a community. I didn't have anyone. In fact, like it was literally me sitting in um, in the living room of my boss's house while he walked around in his boxes, like um, <laughs> like complaining about like oh like like can you also take my daughter to um, her tennis lesson because you know that was a part of my job and that was my introduction to SEO. So there was literally no one that I could ask because he knew like very little about it. Um, the developer was curmudgeonly and didn't want to ask any questions. And um, I was then supposed to like figure out how search worked. And I just remember in those moments, like how isolating and how hard it was, like sitting up like all the way up to like, you know, 10 o'clock midnight. Yeah, that was still my, my process even back then of just reading everything I could to figure out what that meant. And I remember 2018 was the very first time that I got into a room of people like yourselves and was like, this is life changing. This is so awesome. Thanks. Am I supposed to take that? Like, you yeah, please. <laughs> 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 All right. That's my job. Well, I mean, I, yeah, let me be ready. Um, I guess like a little housekeeping. Like, I think our next meetup might be February, but it's not like hardcore locked in um, in here. Uh, Nick's been an absolute rock. Like, if you guys remember the little virus that came about and made us all work from home, Nick was the one who like broadcast on YouTube every single week. Oh, every single month, sorry. But we did have a weekly thing. We actually had a weekly Zoom thing. So, like, yeah. Yeah, I did that once. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how we became like really like we were close friends anyway, but like we became close COVID buddies as well. Mm. So, like, you know, she's basically put this community on her back for like the last three years or so, like, just carrying the weight of the world. And yeah, yeah. Anyway, no. thank you very much. Guys. No, I don't do that. It's just very dusty in here. All right, yeah. thank you so much, guys. Um, I hope you've had a really, really nice meetup. Um, talk to each other. Talk to the, um, talk to us. Um, make some connections because uh, these really are the best years. Thank yeah. you. Thank you all. Yeah. Take photos, post a link, and tag them. Smash the like button. Yeah. Yeah.